Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I pray that you're having a wonderful day. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And listen, outside today here in North Carolina, it's almost 80. Maybe it may be a little warmer than 80 degrees. It's, it's wonderful out there. God is good. And I thank him for his goodness, his kindness, and his tender mercy. And I pray that you are doing well. Now, before I go any further, I have to acknowledge all of the kind, kind powerful words of encouragement that have been given to this preacher that has come in from literally all over the all over the country men of god women of god pastors leaders bishops oh my uh uh friends who watch us on a weekly basis uh, friends who are part of the 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 uh thursday noonday prayer that my lovely wife Pamela conducts. I'm telling you, we're hearing from people everywhere who are saying, Bishop Wooden, we're standing with you. We're praying for you. Oh, man of God, we're lifting you up before the Lord, sending me scriptures and saying to me, saying to me, whatever you do, Stay on the wall. Don't come down. Don't take it back. Continue this to, to stand on God's word and tell the truth. Uh, if you follow this ministry, you know that last Sunday I gave a report and I won't go into it. It's out there. You can see it. On, uh, I was contacted and notified that there were certain members of the transgender community who have decided to target yours truly. And I guess this threat was, is designed to silence the man of God, to change me, to move me, uh, to take me down off the wall or to frighten me of, of some uh, of something. And uh, and they talked about how they don't like what I say at uh, school board meetings. Well, it's my son-in-law, Elder John Amantruku. Oh, that 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 man mountain who's gone all over this country, standing for the hearts and minds of our young people and declaring that certain pornographic books should not be available to children. I don't know why anybody would would find a problem with that. But believe it or not. There are people who do. I pray that you're not one of them. I pray that you're still one of those who still have common sense and yet believe that some things are not age appropriate. Now, uh, they're not good for grown people. But what do you think about children? And so he's fighting this great fight. I have declared over and over and over and shall continue to do so that a man cannot turn himself into a a woman. A woman cannot turn herself into a man. If the Campbell Soup Company has enough sense to put Campbell's chicken noodle soup in a Campbell's chicken noodle pan or can, and so you when you open it up, it says chicken noodle soup on the outside of the can. You don't look in there, that's beef soup. <laughs> you don't look in there and that's string beans. No, you open it up. That's the chicken noodle soup. You pour it in the pot, warm it up, and voila. Well, when God made human beings, God has never got conflicted and made a mistake and put a male spirit in a female's body. It almost wagged me out to talk about it. Or to put a female spirit in a male's body. And you got these people who say you can't determine gender at birth. We got to let the child grow and then let him decide when he's 20 what he is. <laughs> What if he decides he's a giraffe? You're going to go along with that? He probably will if you got parents who are that dumb. So here we are. We're just speaking God's truth, common sense, praise the Lord, something they practice ever since human beings have been coming into the world. Uh, if, if they wait till the child is born, they can look at the child and determine it's a girl or it's a boy. Or there are those who don't even wait for childbirth. They find out uh, early on what they are having, and yet there are clowns out there today who want us to uh, do away with all these years of precedence, all the science, all the medical, all of the Bible, and follow their messed up ways. Well, we're going to continue to speak the truth, 
And we're going to say to anyone who is in uh, that uh, sin and that lifestyle, listen, sometimes our truth may come across as hard. It may come across as harsh. It may come across as hard hitting, but no that we're motivated by love. Jesus Christ died for you. Jesus Christ loves you. And if you're having gender dysphoria, if you're confused about who you are, let me tell you, turn to the God of the Bible. Don't go to some clinic and parents out there, moms and dads, how dare you take your little child, a child who's not old enough to vote, a child who can't buy a pack of cigarettes, a child who needs the parents' permission to go on a field trip. They can't even go on a field trip without the parents signing a permission slip for them to go. Now you mean to tell me you're going to listen to the child, mom and dad, and take the child somewhere and get your child mutilated or allow them them to put poison in your child, puberty blockers, to block the puberty, block the natural development of the child. If that is not child abuse, I don't know what is. And I want to say to those parents, you need Jesus Christ. You need to trust God. Uh, the You're being lied to. You know, parents have been told, they've been told that if they don't get the puberty blockers and if they don't do this to their children, oh my God, your child is going to kill himself. Well, the numbers are in. The numbers are in. The empirical evidence is in. And who's killing themselves are children who who go through with those heinous things. And guess what? Uh, it's amazing that this past Sunday, when we stand, and this was during the 11 o'clock service, uh, we uh, uh, also talked about this during the 8 o'clock. So both services, and, and then we went on after, there's a clip out there showing uh, my second assistant, Elder Anthony Wilson, and uh, my wife, Elder Amon Chukwu, my son-in-law, uh, and my daughter. We, we are surrounded by the saints of the Lord, and, and, and members have come down out of the pews, and we're standing around the altar, me, preachers, male and female, and we're calling on the God of heaven, and asking God to watch over us and to protect us. And uh, uh, the same thing took place uh, in the 8 a.m. service, even when the crowd was much larger, but we didn't have the prayer. But I told them what transpired. And also Friday, past this past Friday night, down in Spartanburg, South Carolina, with the chief of staff of our jurisdiction, Superintendent Tommy Eugene Quick, and the saints at uh, the wonderful Spartanburg Discipleship Center. Praise God. Home of CFAD doing a tremendous work down there. We had church down there and I told them about what have transpired. But isn't it, it amazing? On the heels of this, and I'm hearing from you and you're calling me and saying, Bishop, we're standing with you. We're praying for you. On the heels of all these things, look at what happened across the pond. Yes, over in England, children will no longer be able to access puberty blockers at England clinics. Yes. In, and look, the king and the queen know better. England has woken up. Uh, they realize that these things are not good for children. Children in England will no longer receive puberty blockers, prescriptions. Uh, the National Health Service of England said, confirming that the medicine will only be provided to youth who are taking part in clinical research trials. Children can still receive puberty uh, blockers through some private practices. These puberty blockers are used to delay the onset of puberty by blocking the body from making sex hormones, such as testosterone and estrogen. The hormonal uh, su suppressants, look at this, 
do not reverse any changes that have already happened, but can block changes like breast development and facial hair. We have concluded that there is not enough evidence to support the safety of clinical effectiveness of puberty blockers to make the treatment routinely available at this time. Thank God that they woke up in England and I pray that they will wake up in America and stop giving children these things that are not good for them. Now I'll tell you, uh, the Bible has told us some time ago that you can't do it. God made them male and female. That's God's prerogative, not yours. Not some political group, not some politician, not some quack, not some clinic who is in it for the money. And they know whatever they give the children, that they know that these people are cash cows. And if you are become a part of the community and you start taking these hormones and you've gone on with the transgender lifestyle and okay fella you're trying to make yourself a man or a lady you're trying to make yourself into a woman you're going to have to get shots for the rest of your life uh, and your body is going to rebel you you may sterilize yourself you may cause all kinds of sicknesses and disease to come upon you and you're going to be constantly confused because Deep down in you, you are who the Lord made you to be. And no amount of medicine, shots, clothing, getting your Adam's apple shaved, uh, face reconstructed, makeup, wigs, whatever. None of those things will ever change that. All you got to do is swab the mouth. A Q-tip. A Q-tip will just, a, a, a little Q-tip, less than a penny in expense, will uh, undo or declare that everything you just did was in vain. Sitting there with a dress on and a pair of pumps and everyone calling you a woman, you are still a man. And God wants to make you the best man that he will have you to be. And I may be speaking to someone today. I want to tell you, praise the Lord. You're trying to decide whether to have the augmentations at the bottom that you've already had at the top. I hope they've told you, I hope they've explained that once done, it cannot be undone. And even if you come back to your senses and decide that you're going to be the person that you actually are, because if you were born a male, you're actually a male. I mean, Gary, can you believe this? We got to talk about this now. You're born a female, you're actually a female. I mean, who would have thought that um, this would have to be uh, really uh, uh, discussed? But if you mutilate your body, you're going to end up being a mutilated man. You're going to make yourself a eunuch. You're going to take things away from yourself that, you, that cannot be returned to you. And that's what Satan wants to do. That's what Satan wants to do. He wants you to go too far. He wants you, uh, uh, male, a man, woman, lady, gentleman. He wants you to mutilate yourself. Make a fool of yourself. And people will talk to you and they will pretend that they're down and with it while they're talking to you in your face. And the sooner, the moment you walk off, uh, their whole conversation changes. This preacher loves you enough to tell you the truth. Now, let me say this before I give you my big invite today. I want to move on from that. Look, uh, I'm excited about what God is doing. And let me tell you something. I am not afraid and I am not moved by threats. Uh, I thank God. I thank God to be honest, Brother Gary. I wouldn't have it any other way. I'd feel bad if they were out. They were going against the man down the street and was ignoring me. Anyone who stands for the Lord is going to be challenged uh, by the devil. And I, I have a saying, I wish I would have coined the phrase, but I did not. But it is true. It is true. Anytime you stand for something, you are standing against something else. And those things that you stand against, that, that comes that time when there's a clash 
But I thank God that our God is a keeper. And Paul said this to Timothy. He said, now, uh, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And he said this to him in verse 3 of 2 Timothy. That's it first. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 3, and this is what God gave me to tell you this morning. Uh, when I made this uh, a clip today, the Lord put this particular passage of Scripture on my mind. And here's what God says. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. That is, you suffer hardness. You hold up under the pressure. You don't break. You don't crack. You don't lose your mind. You don't go somewhere and hide. You don't become a coward. You don't take down. You don't tuck tail and run. You certainly don't walk it back. You certainly don't say to the, to the devil, I'm sorry. You don't apologize for telling the truth. And when the hardness comes as a result of standing on God's truth, here's what Jesus said. Uh, Paul says, don't don't pray that hardness is kept away. Don't pray that you have to, uh, that you avoid every storm. No, some hardnesses, some challenges, you just got to outlast it. You got to endure it. You got to go through. That's what Jesus did. The Bible teaches that he endured the cross, despising the shame and is now at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And I'm telling you, I'm telling all the preachers out there, all who are standing for God, all who are standing for the God of the Bible and standing with biblical truth. Hey, buckle up, buttercup. Get ready to rumble because the enemy is coming. But never forget, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The God of the Bible is stronger than the devil. The God of the Bible promised that he would be with us. The God of the Bible promised that he would keep us. The question is, uh, who amongst us are with him? Now, enough of that. Just wanted to let you know, because there are those of you out there whom I know are concerned about this preacher. They want to know, Reverend, how you doing? How you faring? Praise God, I'm good. God is good. And thank you for checking on my mother. She's doing fine. God's a, God's a keeper. God's a, God knows what he's doing. And, uh, and she's living to live again. So we're excited about that. And uh, thank God for your prayers. I've got to say this before the invite. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed with the greatest congregation on this side of heaven. Allow me to boast just a little in the saints who stand with this preacher. You know, some churches is easy to be a part of because preacher don't say anything. Don't nobody's ever offended. They don't get into get involved in anything. We're just a sweet little church around the corner. We everybody we want everyone to like us. Everybody's welcome. And uh, there are no standards. Oh no, we're just a sweet little church and we're going to give you something to encourage you and uh, send you on your way. We promise that the service won't last no more than an hour and we promise that the preacher won't preach any more than 15 minutes and we also promise that you won't remember a word that he said. That's not this church. God has blessed us. We have standards. We believe in the God of the Bible. We believe in this book. And we're standing on it. And sometimes I realize that the things that this that God gives this preacher to say, because these members identify with me. Gary, let me talk about that a little bit tonight. Because they stand with me and identify with me. I'm, I want to show them in the scripture. They too uh, incur, hallelujah, the same pushback, the same resistance, <laughs> But I tell you, I praise God for the support 
I praise God for the prayers and not only our members, but our friends out there who are connected to this ministry. Oh, members of the jurisdiction, NC3, there's, no, there's, no, there's nobody like NC3. Members of our great church, I'm hearing from members of the Church of God in Christ. I'm hearing from friends and I thank God for every one of you. But most importantly, I'm hearing from heaven. Hallelujah. And the God of the Bible it's good. He's wonderful. And uh, to quote my pastor, the late great James Henry Turner, I'm on my way to heaven and I'm enjoying the trip. Well, 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 ain't God good. Now, I want to invite you to join me right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> I get a kick out of that Bible study. Wouldn't, why are you so excited about Bible study? I'll tell you why I'm so excited about Bible study. Because there's Bible study. There's no book like the Bible. The Bible is the only infallible, holy, written word of God. The Bible is God's love letter to us. The Bible, hallelujah, is the book that keeps my feet firmly planted on the ground and yet at the same time keeps me walking in my shoes. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. God bless you.